Once the largest house in Chicago, the Nickerson Mansion was an icon of the American dream. Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to This House. Today we are exploring the house that first inspired the movement we now know as Historic Preservation in Chicago, Illinois. Make sure to hit the subscribe button so you never miss a fascinating episode of This House. Just after the Great Chicago Fire of 1871, the city was rebuilding itself at a staggering rate. New industries were ushering in good-paying jobs, and at the top of these new industries were magnates with wealth the city had never seen before. One such industry leader was Samuel Nickerson, who was quick to capitalize on the national banking industry, buying up more bank stock than any other individual in the country. He quickly expanded his banking empire by founding the Union Stockyards National Bank and the First National Bank of Chicago, eventually venturing into spirits and wartime manufacturing. With most of his wealth being in stocks and bonds, it is hard to put an exact dollar amount on his fortune, but one thing is for certain, he was one of, if not the wealthiest person in Chicago at the time. Naturally, for a man of such status, he wanted the largest home in the city. In 1879, he commissioned renowned Chicago architect, Edward J. Burling, to design for him a 24,000 square foot mansion in the near north side neighborhood. After four years of construction in 1883, the sandstone clad mansion was finished at a total cost of $450,000, or the modern day equivalent of over $13 million. With the memory of widespread fires still in mind, the house was over-engineered to become one of the first fireproof residences in the country, with iron beams supporting brick arches with partition walls extending into the roof behind the sandstone facade. No expense was spared on the interior, which boasted 17 distinct types of marble integrated into columns and tile work. Entering the home, you would be greeted by a bifurcated staircase set behind a colonnade with marble newel posts acting as permanent pedestals for urns. First, guests would be directed to the reception room, where steam designer August Fiedler created an ensemble of dark inlaid wood tiles around the fireplace, capped off by a faux mansard roof at its upper mantle. The dining room was finished out with half-height wood paneling, concealing secret passageways for servants to slip in and out unnoticed. The central focus of the room remained a floor-to-ceiling, built-in curio cabinet for displaying the Nickerson's collection of fine china. We will see more of the first floor in a moment, but for now, let's head upstairs to the second floor stair landing, where we can gaze across the opening to the bedroom. The bedroom had also been decorated by August Fiedler, with hand stenciling to break up the coffered ceiling above a whimsical floral wallpaper, mirroring some of the shapes found in the iron bed frame cozied up to a fireplace. In 1900, Samuel retired and sold his home to Lucius George Fisher, another captain of industry, being the president of the Union Bag and Paper Company. Fisher loved the house, but wanted to add his own touch. He hired Prairie School architect, George Washington Mayer, to balance the existing architecture of the house with more modern features. The art gallery, towards the rear of the house, was transformed into a trophy room with updated bookcases to complement the existing millwork, creating a new mantelpiece for the existing fireplace. Additionally, the ceiling was transformed from a simple skylight to boast a stained glass dome. Fisher spent the rest of his life cherishing his city mansion until his passing in 1916. His family put the house up for sale, but after three years of sitting on the market, grew dismayed. In what is possibly Chicago's earliest historic preservation effort, three influential elites came together to save the house from demolition. Cyrus Hall McCormick II, Julius Rosenwald, and William Wrigley Jr. purchased the house and donated it to the American College of Surgeons. It was primarily used as office space, with very few modifications being made to the existing architecture. Then, in 2003, Chicago-based businessman and philanthropist Richard Driehaus purchased the Nickerson Mansion with the intent to create a museum. Over the years, suit had built up on the porous sandstone, which had nearly turned the house black in appearance. The stone could not be pressure washed, so this unique problem of restoring the facade required an imaginative solution. Over in Europe, preservationists were restoring porous statues and cleaning them with lasers, which appeared to be the best option for cleaning the building. 
spurring the decision to laser the entire building from top to bottom. Fast forward to 2008, the museum opened its doors to the public, where guests can enjoy the meticulously restored architecture of each room, with Tiffany stained glass throughout. Instead of housing the family's original furnishings, though there are some items extant, the museum shares Driehaus' private collection of turn-of-the-century decorative arts, ranging from paintings to statues to furnishings. If you have ever visited, I would love to read about your experience down below in the comments section. And while you're there, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House. I would also like to take a moment to say a very special thank you to our This House supporters whose names you can see on screen right now. If you would like to see your name on the screen and contribute in part to the production of these videos, join our membership program today. I'll see you next time on This House.